Hi there, welcome back. The topic of this uh, video is not actually the piece of equipment you're looking at. It's uh, got to do with something I needed to test a repair that I'm doing on this. What this is, is a Krell S1500 five channel amplifier. There are actually five of these modules. Uh, two of them are removed. And there was a, a bit of a problem with this and I've repaired what I believe uh, to be in the fault and I needed to test this. And usually you just use a signal generator, put it in, check the results or hear the results, put it on the scope, and we could actually determine that this thing's working fine. The problem is I don't have a source to properly drive this uh, amplifier. This is a power amplifier. There's no preamp. There's no volume control. It just literally is a power amplifier, basically with a volume at full ball. That's it. All or nothing. Whatever you put in, it amplifies by the amplifying factor. If you put in a massive spike, you're going to get a massive spike out. If you put in a, a small tone, you're going to get a lower tone out. So I have to be very careful with how I drive this. And the reason I want to test this uh, completely is because this is not a normal um, RCA input. It's actually a balanced input amplifier. Each input has an RCA jack here, but it also has a balanced input, which is the uh, XLR connector. And in the balanced input, you've got a hot signal, which is the same as the one that would go into the RCA. You've got ground and you've got the cold signal, which is the reverse polarity of the RCA or the hot signal going in here. I wanted to test it with a full balanced uh, mode instead of using the, um, the shortcut, which is actually just to short out pin 3 to ground over there. And I'll explain that in a minute. So I didn't have a source that would give me a test tone, a normal sine wave signal that um, I could use to, to check that both parts of the amp are working. In other words, the part that's uh, treating the hot signal and the part that's treating the cold signal. So I needed to make one in a hurry and uh, I was actually going to build a line driver, a uh, balanced line driver. And all it takes is probably one op amp, a couple of op amps. But I realized there must be a simpler way by using uh, an app on a smart device, either a tablet or a smartphone. But uh, that's getting a bit ahead of myself. So very quickly, because most of you will know what a balanced uh, signal is, what we have with a balanced signal, what we have with a normal signal, is if you have the signal coming in and ground, this is your in, this is your ground, this signal here if we rep re represent it as a sine wave, that's what it looks like. Now, that's what you normally get in RCAs. This is what you get here. You get your signal over here and you get your ground over there. Now, when you're looking at a balanced signal, there's another, uh, another path. And that is you'd have your, they call it the hot signal. You have your ground. And you'd have your cold signal. And your cold signal coming in here would be the exact opposite of that one. Okay? Now, that means that this signal here is an identical representation of that one, but with a polarity reversed. You can also say it's 180 degrees out of phase. It's technically not correct to say that it's 180 degrees out of phase because there's not really a time delay, which is what phase implies. There's actually a polarity uh, difference. But if you're looking at a pure sine wave, as a sine wave, which is 180 degrees out of phase to the hot signal. What this does, you can look it up. There's a lot of information on the advantages of balanced signals, but... What this does is it reduces noise, especially on long cables. Now, if I want a balanced signal to test an amplifier like the one we've just seen, I can do it with a signal, uh, a normal signal generator, for example, where I make this one zero. So if I short this to ground, that disappears, and I'm only inputting the ground and the hot lead, and I connect the cold lead to zero. Okay, this is normally in an XLR connection. This is pin 2, this is pin 1, this is pin 3. I hope I've got that right. So if I connect that to 0, the only signal going in is that one. And because what the amp does is it takes that one and subtracts that one, 
So it takes, let's call this sine wave A and this one sine wave B. You get the V out going into the amplifying stage equals VA minus VB. But because VB is minus VA, what you've got is V out equals VA minus minus VA. So you get 2 VA. So it basically doubles the amplitude of the one signal, as it were. Now, why do I need that? If I've got the ability to test this with this thing shorted to ground, why do I need that? Well, this particular amplifier and a lot of amplifiers treat the two um, signals separately first. And I might have a problem with the part of the circuit that's handling this before it does the summing. So putting zero on here, which means I would just get V out equals VA, is not good enough. If I put zero on here, then I might have a signal coming out the amp and it tells me that everything's fine. And the minute I put in a balanced signal, the part of the circuit that's handling the cold signal might have a problem and my whole um, supposition that the amp is fine goes out the window. So I wanted to be able to test with a proper balanced signal. Now, lots of ways of doing this. You can take uh, a signal. This is as simple as using an op amp where you've got a signal going in. I'll do this simply. Um, signal comes in. If it goes into an inverting op amp, I don't even know if that's the right uh, symbol, I can get, this is in, this could be signal A, this could be B, which is the reverse of A. So if I've got that, I'll have that. And then of course I've got my ground going through. So I can do that. I can just simply use an op amp, but you know, I wanted to do something in a hurry and I realized that I have the tools right here to do this without any great confusion. And I'll show you, it's as simple as uh, an app on a smartphone or tablet. Now the app I'm using, I've got this app called EE Toolkit, which I use quite a bit. I, th I think it's one of the better ones out there, but there are many, many, many tools for this. And in EE Toolkit, there is a frequency section and there's a function generator section over here. Now what this allows me to do, and if I just apply it, there's my signal. I can change the frequencies. I can stop it. Now, what this is doing is it is producing exactly the same signal as a, a signal generator would. And the frequencies I can use on here go from 20 hertz to 21 kilohertz, which is fine for the purposes of testing power amplifiers like this. Now, the other thing I can do is I can apply this to the left and right channel, to the left channel or to the right channel alone. So I can test these separately. Now, what this means is this thing has got a stereo signal coming out. There's a left and a right with a common ground. And that gave me the idea. If I've got left and right coming out like that, and then I've got this button over here, which says phase settings. Now, if I have left and right channel and I have the possibility of changing the phase between them, then I can actually create two signals that are opposite to each other. In other words, reverse polarity. In other words, I can emulate a balanced signal. And I'll show you that on the scope. At the moment, the phase setting is zero. And if I go up to 180 degrees, I shift the left channel up 180 degrees out of phase with the uh, with the right channel, I should get a left and right channel that are exact opposites of each other. Let's have a look at the scope because there's something hidden here which I actually didn't realize. So at the moment I've set this to a one kilohertz sine wave, sine wave one kilohertz left and right, and I'm taking the signal from the earphone socket of the um, of the iPad in this case, and I'm feeding that to the two channels of the scope. Now I'm going to show you the scope and I'll tell you what I'm doing down here and you'll see the result on the scope. So here we have the left and right signal. 
the left and right channel of the stereo signal on the scope on two separate traces. They are perfectly aligned and on top of each other, superimposed. There's a few glitches, but it's uh, the way I've connected the scope probes up. It's not the most consistent connections, but as you can see, they're exactly on top of each other, and I can actually just shift it away slightly, but they are identical. Now, the first thing I'll show you is I can change the amplitude of both by changing the volume control on the iPad or on the smartphone. And as you can see, they go up identically. Okay, now this is important because when I need the two uh, signals to be opposite to each other, I still want the volume to apply to both because that's what a balanced signal will be. It's a signal that is exactly equal in amplitude but opposite in phase or polarity to the other. So I can do that by s simply moving the volume slider on the, on the smartphone or in this case the, the tablet. Now watch what happens when I change the phase of the left channel. I'm going to go up in phase by 180 degrees. And the first thing I notice is that does, doesn't really work. This 180 degrees is wrong, but I think that's on my app. Because if I go down here, 180 degrees, in other words, I've uh, moved the phase of the left channel up 180 degrees and the phase of the right channel by minus 180 degrees. That is wrong. It should be a sum, should be 180 degrees apart. But for some reason, the app is, uh, is actually wrong. But what I can see here are two signals that are equal and opposite. And let me just place them again on top of each other. And that's what you've got. You've got equal and opposite signals. And if I now change the volume on the iPad, it applies to both. So what I've got here on the left and right channels is actually the hot and cold signal of a balanced signal. And that's exactly what I wanted to create. So it's as simple as that. I take my stereo out, my headphone jack from the iPad, and I consider the left channel, for example, as the uh, hot signal for the balanced. I consider the right channel as the cold signal for the balanced and the ground is the common ground. So I've got my XLR pins corresponding to left and right channel and ground. And I have a valid balanced signal. Mind you, this is only a test signal, but it does work. And the amplitude that I can get on this, if I just changed the uh, setting here, I'm putting the volume on maximum. And what it gives me is What is the amplitude here? Let's just do RMS. I get a one volt RMS out of the iPad, which means that my um, left channel is one volt RMS. My right channel is one volt RMS. And that's what my uh, signal is gonna be going into the uh, amplifier. Now, why is it important that this volume control applies to both? Well. If I changed the amplitude of one of these, it would no longer be the exact opposite of the other one, so it would not be a valid balanced signal. It would actually be a distorted signal because the, uh, the difference between the two, what the uh, ampl amplifier does is it's differential, so it takes the hot signal, subtracts from that the cold signal, and you get double the amplitude. Now, you should get two signals that are identical, so you get exactly double the result. If I uh, have a slightly different amplitude on one or frequency on one, I can actually mess that up. If I change the frequency now, it's at one kilohertz. If I simply press the two kilohertz button, it applies it to both signals and the phase difference is exactly the same as I'd set. So I still have my balanced output. And what my amplifier is gonna do is gonna take that and it's going to subtract one from the other and do a differential, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Now, um, why is this better than my signal generator? Well, I could have done exactly the same on the signal generator. I could have produced two sine waves, a left and a right, or rather channel one, channel two, same frequency, and I could make them 180 degrees out of phase with each other. The problem is that 
the particular single generator, and I think most of them will be the case, when I change the amplitude of one, I need to then go and change the amplitude of the other. I can't do it simultaneously. And that would be a problem if, I, if I'm in the middle of testing to have these things move around with different amplitudes so that I wouldn't have a consistent signal which is uh, equivalent to a balanced audio signal. So that's it. Um, and that allows me now to test the amp and it allows me to change the amplitude to start very low because the problem with uh, an amplifier like this, it's, it's just a power amplifier. And I have to be very careful because any glitches can go through as very, very loud thumps. If I mess with the headphone socket like that, you know, you'd probably just hear sort of a ha 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 or whatever on your headphones. But with an amplifier that's going to blow out up to, I think this thing is 150 watts per channel, the results could be quite catastrophic. So when you work with this, you want to make sure that you don't get any of this. You want to make sure that your uh, smartphone or, or tablet is uh, sitting still on a bench, that you're not going to touch the headphone jack, you don't want any spur signals going in, because there is no volume control on this power amplifier. The volume control is only on the source, which in this case is the smartphone signal generator app. So I hope that's been useful. It's certainly something that uh, I'm not going to be using often. One of the ideas is to add a uh, converter here, you know, a line driver, or put in a, a normal signal and you get a balanced out, or put in a balanced in and you get a normal out. So that's one of the little modules that I'm going to build and, and add to this bench. But for now, when I needed it in a hurry, this idea came in handy. And strangely enough, I, I, I searched the net for this and I couldn't find anything that really explained this. Uh, just one thing, else, something else I want to show you. If I measure the difference between these two, what I get is double the amplitude, as I've mentioned. So if I want to see what that difference looks like, I can actually use the maths function. And I'm looking for A minus B, which is what the amplifier is doing. So that is set, maths function. I need to do one more thing. I need to make sure that the scale is the same. And there we have it. As you can see, the amplitude, that purple wave, is the difference between the two, which is what the amplifier is doing. And it is measuring double the amplitude of any one of those. And it's in phase with the first one as you can see the yellow one. Okay, be very careful with the source. This is a source that can be kind of finicky. Look at that. If you, if you don't plug it in properly or if your headphone socket is a little bit dirty, that's what you've got. You've got two signals, 180 degrees out of phase. And when you plug this into uh, the XLR, the balanced input with your left channel as the hot signal, your right channel coming out of your iPad or iPhone, whatever, as the cold signal, common ground, you've got a balanced signal. Hope that was useful, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.